old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching a tasty pastry. It's a low carb pop tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. Television on rxmuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, your 30 minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions bodybuilding, non bodybuilding, diet, training, supplementation, anything and everything going on in and outside of the bodybuilding world. It is all on the table. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. So glad you can join us. We're going to go right into the questions. The first two questions on this show from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. First question. Dave, I've been using a lot of your ice lines from my main protein source. Just been lazy, not making meals. Is it possible to become bloated uh, or retain water from it using versus using whole foods as one's main protein source? You know, and I mean, if it's unlikely, I mean, some people like I've gone and done days where I had only like protein powder. And what I noticed sometimes was that I got, um, you know, the, when I pooped, it was like almost like toothpaste. And there was no, there was nothing solid about it because everything was so liquidy, you know. And, and it just, think about it, even whey powder, when you pull fluid out of it in the colon, it's never going to really turn to a solid waste. So it's going to be like, 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 like a toothpaste consistency. And sometimes it can irritate your stomach. You know, sometimes the, the, the digestive tract likes to have some solid food to actually digest and use as binders, you know, for, for the waste. So it's possible if you're using a lot of shakes. I, if you had like a, a lactose response, which I don't think you would ever get from um, isolized because there's, there's like trace, trace lactose in there. Um, I'm the most lactose intolerant person of all time and I don't have any problems with it. If you're having a problem with, with drinking isolized, it's probably an, an irritation of your, your gut just because you're, you're drinking too many shakes. So yeah, it definitely can happen from too many liquid meals. Um, you could do that even if you like, I know guys like I used to back in the day blend up eggs and oatmeal, and I know guys that have done chicken and stuff, and you always get, you never, you never digest your food. You'd think it would be easier to digest your food if it was in liquid form, but a lot of times it's not, and you get, ir you get like gas, and you get, because you're drinking it down usually very fast, gas gets trapped, air gets trapped in there. So what I would do is try to switch at least to maybe half food, half shakes, and see if that solves the problem. It probably will. Second question again from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Um, carb blockers, what do you think of them? Do they really work? We get these questions about carb and fat blockers a lot because I think people are looking for free calories. The problem is when you block carbs or you block fats for that matter, you're also blocking 
fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins you know so car blockers can actually block the uh, water soluble vitamins more frequently and you know you never want to block the absorption of something because then that could make you deficient in something and you don't know what you're being deficient in because these car blockers are not specific they're not just specific for like pasta or or glucose they're they block carbs and and there's a lot of carb based vitamins and and stuff like that so I don't like to take anything that inhibits our bodies from absorbing anything because that could be dangerous. Shut your fat mouth and stop eating the, the, the carbs if you want to lose weight. You, there's no shortcuts because whenever you try to take a shortcut, you there's always some kind of a side effect or ramification of what you do. Let's go to our Instagram questions. Again, if you're not already following us on Instagram, did I pause myself? No, I didn't because I was sneezing a little before. If you're not already following us on Instagram, official underscore RX Muscle. If you're watching us for the first time here on YouTube, we ask that you subscribe below, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss any of our show segments, updates, or any of our live episodes. We go live generally now Sunday nights for Heavy Muscle Radio and then Monday afternoons for our new show, Iron Therapy. Again, if you have already done so, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss anything that we have going on during the course of the week. If you like what you're watching, hit the like button, comment below. And as always, we appreciate all of your support. Let's go to, so actually, Dave, you and I just spoke about this before we went live. Uh, the question is from Dedgwick, and I know other people have been asking us this as well. Um, your opinion about Arnold Schwarzenegger's recent comments. Now, he made it on a podcast. I'm not sure exactly which podcast, um, another publication did sort of a uh, summary, but you wanted to watch that podcast, correct, before you made any uh, actual comments on it? Yeah, I haven't heard what Arnold said. I, uh, Arnold was, I think, just basically commenting that the recent rash of deaths we're seeing has a lot to do with drug use and, and stuff like that and being too big. But I, you know, I, have, I haven't listened to it, so I will not say – I'll make a separate video uh, reaction to that because I think it's, it's worth listening to because – a lot of times Arnold Schwarzenegger gets taken out of context and that's not cool because especially remember when he was saying, uh, you know, screw your freedoms, that whole, that whole fiasco, he really wasn't saying screw your freedoms. He got taken out of context and it blew up and it was unfortunate. And that's the culture we live in. We live in a society where people want to knock down people who are in authority, who want to exert their opinions. And it's really sad that, you know, that we were built, uh, we're a nation that was built on freedom of speech. And nowadays, there really isn't freedom of speech because you can say whatever you want, but then you have to suffer the social media ramifications by being thrown off Facebook or Instagram or being canceled by Hollywood or, or whoever else, you know, wants to cancel you. It, it's unfortunate. It's, it's really nice that Arnold is at a point in his life where he has fuck you money and he doesn't really care. So he can say whatever he wants. They can't cancel Arnold. Arnold will never be canceled. Arnold has enough money. He doesn't need to be anyone paying him anything to do anything. Arnold just is at, at a point in his life where he's going to say what he thinks. And I respect him for that. And once again, I will listen to what his uh, comments were and I will have a separate reaction for that. Let's go to Hector S. Espria. Um, so he mentions Coke Zero, like meal water, but then he also mentions zero sugar energy drinks. Now, usually when we get this question, it's about Diet Coke while on prep or are these diet compatible? But right. then he also throws in uh, zero sugar energy drinks. So um, generally, I guess, given the phase of the year that you're in, off, on, pre, your thoughts on those, pro but then also energy drinks because I, I don't know if that's something that you necessarily address yeah. in the past especially the zero sugar ones when you're dieting you know i have no problem with energy drinks now just because there's zero sugar doesn't mean there's zero carbs so you have to be careful of that you can get caught in a trap like it's the old sugar-free ketchup trap you know yeah there's no added sugar but there's sugar in ketchup so just be careful that um the energy drink doesn't have carbohydrates that are not sugar related in there because theoretically you can say sugar free and you can have maltodextrin in there. That's not sugar, but it's a carb. So if it is a sugar free energy drink, like the bangs and the, uh, even the rock stars and stuff like that, those sugar free ones, those, those are pretty good. There's only like a gram or two of sugar in there or a gram or two of carbs, I should say in there at all. So those are fine. If you're having one to get you through your workout and through their, through your day, so you can get your cardio done while you're dieting. I have no problem with that. Uh, interesting one here. Uh, 
not sure if we've ever really dealt uh, with the topic of autism in bodybuilding. The question is from uh, ND Wolverine. Do you know anything about training with autism? Um, I don't feel most tricep. So I guess, uh, I mean, he, he may be autistic because he's describing sort of his own experiences. Uh, I don't feel most tricep exercises back basically what I can't see. Would isometrics help and how much would I implement them? Is this something that you've dealt with? Or have you dealt with any uh, autistic uh, clients or bodybuilders? You know, autism is, is a loaded, you know, type of subject because there's a spectrum that, that people are on. There's a spectrum where there's some people that have autism, but there are very, very, you know, low, you know, expression of it. You know, you got guys like, you know, Elon Musk who says he's autistic, right? Or something like that. And, uh, but he's very, you know, he's very highly functioning. Then there's people that are very low functioning and have, you know, can barely speak. So there's really no, um, but most autistic people are not physically incapacitated. So I don't even know why there would be any restriction or any kind of difference in the training of autistic uh, individuals as opposed to non-autistic. Because I don't think it's, it's not really a physical issue. It's more of a, a mental, you know, emotional issue that, that's... Um, that the problem, that's the problem. Matter of fact, I think a lot of guys uh, and, and women that have autism do well with training, uh, that it makes it better from what I understand and from the people that I'm in, in, in touch with. So yeah, I don't, I don't think you have to, there's, there's no, if you can't feel a tricep exercise because you're not doing it right or you're, you're using too much weight or you're not using full range of motion, it's the same problem that anyone else would have. It has nothing to do with probably the autistic aspect of yourself. Ivan Banyan asks, how catabolic is T3 actually if you're on gear? Uh, and what dose do you think is the sweet spot? T3 only becomes catabolic if you're taking ridiculously high amounts of it. And, you know, uh, if you're taking anabolic steroids, you're taking GH, taking clenbuterol, and, and you're taking T3, you're probably not going to burn any muscle because steroids and GH and clenbuterol preserve, you know, spare muscle tissue. Uh, so... That's not the issue. I mean, now, if you went from taking nothing to 100 micrograms a day, you probably have an arrhythmia and have a heart attack and drop dead, you know, or something like that. That's more risky than the fact that you're going to be catabolic. Now, I remember hearing, I think it was Luke Wood, may you rest in peace. He had gotten some um, T3, I think, that was like 25 times the dosage it should have been. He didn't know. And he was taking too much, and his body was just losing muscle like crazy. He couldn't eat enough food. His weight was dropping drastically, like like ten pounds every couple of days. And that that's because he was he was overdosing on this stuff. So if you're taking the right dosage in the twenty five to seventy five microgram range, you know, with maybe a hundred being the highest, you're not going to lose any muscle if you're eating a high protein diet and you're training and you're resting and you're doing everything you're supposed to. Uh, it only gets when people do crazy nutty amounts of it or by accident, maybe they're taking too much of it. Uh, let's go to Nico Cantemir. Uh, and I guess this is relevant to your app, the Dave Plumbo Experience app. Can you explain why in your rotational diet, there are some days with no carbs, uh, if you can't stay in ketosis, because some days you eat carbs? Yeah, well, if you're on a rotational carb diet, meaning that some days you eat carbs, some days you don't. And that's usually how I start off most of my clients. You're not in ketosis. You're not going to be in ketosis. Even on the days that you're eating just protein and fat, you're not going to be in ketosis. I just like to do high days and low days. And what I find is if I do on my low day, if I do just protein and fat, I get the person's body used to eating a type of diet that it could potentially be the diet I eventually put them on, which if they need it to, especially in men, I would put them on a keto. If I went to a ketogenic diet, they're just going to eat the protein fat days. So they kind of are used to the diet plan and the right amount of protein, the right amount of fat. Whereas, um, theoretically, you could do high day, like with, with guys with crazy metabolisms, I'll do protein and fat days, which are theoretically, you know, uh, ketogenic days, and I'll add carbs even to that day. So they might do 200 with that. They might do 300 another day. I rotate it around. And, and really, to be honest with you, it's impossible for me to give you a this one size fits all type of a diet because every person I evaluate depending on what their metabolism is like. And for people I've never worked with, I start them off on a certain amount of food in a certain ratio of, of days with carbs and not carbs as a trial period, basically. And I see how their bodies respond. If they need more food, I give them more food. If they need less food, I cut, I cut back their food or cut back their carb days. And, and that's what a coach does. A good coach is constantly 
taking the program that's a static program to start with, and static meaning doesn't move, and then making it dynamic, meaning they're changing it constantly as necessary. If a program works and the person's dropping weight, I don't change anything. I don't want to take away food if I don't have to. If I could play with some cardio and some fat burner variables, then I would rather, you know, vary that around first. But, uh, you know, it, like I said, it really depends on, you know, the coach and, and how the person sees that the athlete's body is reacting to what they're eating. And so that's just my methodology. Like I said, I could do a protein, a high carb day, and then I could do a medium carb day and a low carb day. But what I find is that by going zero carbs on some days, I can give them a lot more fat, which restores their fat levels. Because you got to remember, there's essential fatty acid requirements in the body. And if you deprive fat too long in the diet, the body goes into like a hoarding mode. So by giving higher fat days, uh, I find that that kind of stops the metabolism from slowing down. Uh, let's go to right, left, right. Maybe he's a boxer. Uh, we talked about um, zero sugar, sugar-free drinks, energy drinks earlier. Uh, artificial sweeteners. This is another topic that you got a lot of questions on. How many packets of artificial sweeteners a day would you say is too much? And I guess if you want to break that down, okay. prep, off prep. Yeah. Off season, you can have as much as you want. I I, I love. I'll put seven Splendor in my <laughs> in my coffee uh, from Seven Eleven in my large coffee. So. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you're dieting, okay, to try to lose weight, splenda packets, the sucralose in there, which is what gives it the sweet flavor, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is every packet they put like a gram of sugar in there, malt or dextrin or dextrose they put in there with it. Why do they do that? Because the, the sucralose is such a tiny amount of powder that you wouldn't even be able to see it. So they add something. They need to add a gram of something in there. Why, why they use sugar, I have no idea. It's so stupid. It's a sugar substitute they're putting sugar into. Um there's a product called Stevia Balance where they take the Stevia that's also a very small amount and they add a, a, a gram of inulin fiber to that. Uh, that's a better, a better method to, or that's a better way to add substance to the packet because the fiber is not absorbable. But it probably costs more to add inulin fiber than it does to add sugar. So they just say, hey, screw it, we'll just put dextrose in here. So the problem with that now is if you're going to use 20 packets of Splenda throughout the day, you're going to add 20 grams of carbs to your to your meals, uh, to your basically daily intakes, and that's too much. So usually what I do have people do when they're dieting is I have them, if they're going to use a lot of packets more than two or three a day, I'll have them use the Stevia Balance that you can get from uh, that NOW company. on It's on Amazon.com. And then off-season, it doesn't matter what they use because who cares if you're getting the extra, you know, a couple grams of carbs from the uh, artificial sweetener. But pre-contest, they, they can definitely sabotage weight loss. Take a couple of uh, species-related questions. Hardcore Dan, I'm on your second bottle of Testilize. I'm feeling the results now. Can we take it year-round, or do we have to cycle off it? Also, uh, does Omega Lies interfere with it if it's taken at the same time due to the fats? You could take a Testilize all year-round because there's nothing hormonal in it. It's not like you have to cycle on or off something because it's going to affect your androgen receptors or something like that. It's just tweaking how much estrogen and how much DHT are in the body, and then, of course, how much testosterone. So, But it's doing it through other methodologies. It's not, it's not hormonal in and of itself, so there's no toxicity or anything like that. So, yeah, you can stay on that year-round, especially if it's working well and keeping your ratios good. As far as omega lyse goes, no, omega lyse will not. Fats won't inhibit the absorption of, of, other, of other nutritional supplements. Sometimes, like fiber, can inhibit the absorption of fat. So you might not want to take omega lyse with your uh, fiber lye shake at the same time, you probably want to separate it by an hour. But yeah, the, you, could, you could take your vitamins and your essential fats all together. Uh, Mr. Moore, Indy, if you mix up Amino Evolved and you don't drink it all, can you refrigerate it and drink it the next day? You know, I do it for my kids. My kids, because they, you know, they're like, I want it, I want Amino, I want Amino. And we make a big thing of it for them and then they take two sips of it and then we'll put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, it's fine. You can, if you keep it in the refrigerator, the only thing you wouldn't want to keep it out was you wouldn't want to keep it room temperature because it could grow bacteria, I guess, theoretically in it. I don't know. I mean, there is some antibacterial agents in there, but I don't I don't know, you know, once you mix it. So if you put it in the refrigerator, it's fine. Uh, Ivan Bodybuilding, can you burn fat with Clen if you're in a caloric surplus? For example, you're 12 weeks out of a show, you're still eating to grow, but you want to start burning some fat slowly. Well, I mean... If you take clenbuterol, it's going to burn fat, okay? If you're eating too much food where you're still adding fat and then you're 
you're burning some and adding it back, then you, you might not see any fat loss. So you don't want to eat too much food where you're going to counteract the effects of what the clenbuterol is doing because then you're wasting your time, right? So can you use clenbuterol in the off season or, you know, when you just start dieting? Is it counterproductive? No, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't use I wouldn't use clenbuterol in the off season. It's kind of stupid, you know. If you're eating it just so you can eat more food, I mean, it's kind of dumb. You're kind of getting your body used to this this substance that's great fat burner just because you want to eat like a glutton. And you know what the truth is? You'll always eat more than what clenbuterol burns. That's always the way it is. It's like the person who does an hour of cardio extra per day so they can eat an extra meal. Meanwhile, the meal still causes them to get fat because the, the cardio doesn't burn off the meal even. Uh, they think it does, but it really doesn't. So don't don't get into eating disordered behavior or or, or supplement taking uh, disordered behavior either because it always just leads to you binging ultimately, okay? Take a couple of more questions. Um, Justin Frank, should you switch esters if getting PIP and test flu from test prop? I hate test propionate. I, I have the worst testosterone. I get the worst flu from it. And um, I get, you know, the achiness. I get the temperature spikes. I, I just feel terrible. If you have that reaction to test propionate, don't take it. It doesn't matter. All testosterone is the same. Just take cypionate and anethate. Neither one of them cause any problems with pain on injection site. They don't uh, spike fevers on it. You don't get steroid flu on it. They're the best ones to take. I don't know why anyone would take anything, anything else. I'll take another one here. Big run, athletic body. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I was phrasing this, but does it make sense? Okay, let's, let's put it that way. Does it make sense to use short-term insulin with GH and contest prep uh, at workouts, I guess, in training to benefit from the anti-catabolic effect and regeneration? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love this question because we get I get it so often. You know, especially the pre-workout insulin. Should I take pre? Should I take um, insulin pre-workout um, when I'm dieting? Oh yeah, that's a great idea. All right, I'm this here. I am. I'm on a diet. I'm eating. You know, even if you're not eating no carb, you're eating low carbs, and you're going to go to the gym and you want to have energy and feel great. So you, you go and take a fast-acting insulin before you go to the gym, and then you go into the gym and you have low blood sugar and feel terrible and have a terrible workout. <laughs> it, it's the dumbest idea of all time. It's even dumb in the off season when you're eating a lot of calories because. I'm going to take a shot of insulin, and then I'm going to have to all work out long, guzzle carbs so that my blood sugar doesn't drop too low. Why would you want your blood sugar to drop low while you're training and working out using carbs? It's the stupidest idea of all time. I know Milos advocates it, and I love Milos, and I respect him a lot. I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's not smart, okay? You should be carved up before you get to the gym. If you want to take a short-acting, fast-acting insulin first thing in the morning with your breakfast to carb yourself up, go for it. But don't take it right before you go to the gym. It's moronic, especially while you're dieting. You know That's not a smart move. Um, this one is right up your alley from uh, Cyrus Aga. Uh, so, I mean, he asked specifically what shoes are best for squatting. But um, first of all, what did you – did you even wear shoes while squatting? Because we see a lot of Shetty's bodybuilders yeah. – you know, advocating for not wearing sneakers yeah. or any type of shoes with squatting, your approach. And I guess if there is a shoe, what would you, which one would you recommend? Yeah. Squatting barefoot is the dumbest thing of all time. Because even if you have a good, and I was, it's funny, I was just a physical therapist today because I'm getting a therapy on my foot. And we were talking about this. And, you know, even if you have an arch in your foot, under the bearing, bearing weight, in other words, when you put that squat bar in your back and you're standing there barefoot, I don't care how good your arch is. Your foot's going to go just like that, flatten out, because that weight on your back is going to flatten those arches out. Now you're biomechanically not pressing from the right muscle groups in your legs. Stupid, dumb. I know some people do uh, deadlifts barefoot because you know why? They're closer to the ground, so the bar has to move less. That's a different story. If you want to do that in competition so that you can hopefully get a, a better lift, you're doing one rep. That's a different story. I'm talking about squatting for reps. The biomechanics of, of your feet under that much weight will be horrendous. You want to eat, number one, I think that every bodybuilder should have custom orthotics made from either a chiropractor or podiatrist. You put them in your shoes. The best sneakers are not the sneakers that are lower in the back. You want to get sneakers that are higher in the back. So the heel is actually a little bit higher. Okay? There are some basketball shoes they make now that I actually had to return because they were so low in the back. And I don't know if that's because it makes it easier to jump off the, off the ball of your foot. But you don't want to shoot because you, when you're squatting, you're pushing from your heels. 
So if your heel is lower than the top of your foot, you, once again, that changes your biomechanics. So you need a sneaker that's a little higher. I like the Air, Nike Air Max. Do I have a, my crazy sneaker here? Yeah, these Nike Air Maxes are really, really nice. They, see, they got, they got the nice little slightly higher lift in the back. And the reason I have my shoe off is because I'm resting my, my foot. It's throbbing right now. But uh, they got the little air sole here. And you can see that, that when you put this thing down, it's not sitting lower this way. It's sitting a little higher up in the back. And that's what you want for a squat shoe. Uh, even the, the Otomix, so those Otomix shoes, they have no heel support whatsoever. They're not really good for squatting. You really want a shoe that has motion control. Those Nike's Air Maxes are really good. And I know the follow-up question from the fan is going to be, what is your shoe size? 15. Hasn't changed. Well, it hasn't changed recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking about this. You know, Nike, I'm convinced that Nike pumps up the sizes. So in other words, as you get bigger and bigger sizes, they inflate the sizes. So in other words, like I wear a 15 in a Nike sneaker, but if I have to go buy a shoe to wear like a dress shoe, I'm a 14. And... When I was a little bigger, was I was 300 pounds, you know, and my foot had, I guess, was flattened out more because I was carrying so much weight. I was actually a 16. The 15 was too small, and but I still was a 14, and I was still a 14 in the shoe. So Nike purposely inflates them. There was a story I don't know if you saw. We were talking about it on After Hour. Shaquille O'Neal saw this young 13-year-old kid. He wore a size 18. The kid, and he couldn't get sneakers anywhere, and he was like. He didn't have any shoes to wear out, and he, and he was crying, and, and Shaq bought him like six grand worth of shoes, like sneakers, dress shoes, everything, because they had to be custom made, of course. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. 16 is the limit of what they sell like online. When I, when I was in the 90s looking for shoes, you would go to stores, and they would have like one pair of 16s, like if you got lucky. And I would go to every store and look and see what the 16 was because there were people that wear 15s and 16s, and they go and they buy the shoes. There was nothing else. There was no way to go online and buy what you needed. So if I got a pair, if I saw a 16 or two pairs of 16s, I would just buy them because, because they, they were so hard to find. Nowadays, it's easy because you can go to Nike.com, and you just you can – they got a million pairs, and you can find every size pretty much. So you can even customize them to make it look the way you want. So it, we live in a great world in the sense that uh, the internet makes things a lot more accessible. No, you know, um, that story you just told Shaq, that, that's been a recent thing of his where, yeah. you know, he'll literally walk into a store. He'll be at a store or whatever, yeah. and he'll just walk up to the cashier as somebody's about to pay, and he'll just pay for it. He'll... Yeah, be at like a jewelry store. Or somebody's buying an engagement ring, and he yeah. Did you see that? For them, but... He was at Zales in, in in the um in the mall. Yeah, and some guy was coming in. He had a he had a ring on layaway. He was been paying it off for like three years or something like that, and and he, he didn't have the payment or something like that. And Shaq's like, how much? You know, he asked the, the the woman how much he owed, and I don't know. It was probably he didn't say how much it was, but it probably wasn't a lot. Shaq paid it for him. And the guy's like, no, no, you can't do it. Please, please. Shaq's like, are you kidding me? He goes, I do this all the time. He said, don't worry about it. You know. And someone asked, the guy was interviewing Shaq, said, what were you doing in Zales in the mall? Uh, you know, Why yeah. would you shop? That's where you shop for jewelry? He's like, I got my own jewelry line in Zales. <laughs> <laughs> so Shaq shut the guy right down. Like, In other words, how, why would you, who have all this money, sh shop in Zales yeah. of all places? And he's like, I got a jewelry line in Zales. You know, that's why I shop there. You know, so he was supporting no, his but, vendors. You know, um, I know this just because I've been in sports for however many years before social media, right? Yeah. I mean, Shaq has had that reputation. I mean, very quietly donating to a lot of different causes. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's someone that's, uh, I mean, that generosity has been there way before social media. I know when somebody gets caught on camera or seen on camera doing something, obviously the suspicion is, well, you know, clearly they knew the cameras were rolling right. or they knew it was going to be a nice viral moment for them. But I know this for a fact that uh, well before any advent of social media, Shaq has always been known as a very, very generous donor. Uh, so very cool. And, and In fact, very, Shaq yeah. actually bought Sid his first pair of Nike Air Maxes. Uh, and a lot of people don't yes, realize Yes, I didn't that. want to go there, but <laughs> now that we're on that topic. But I know, you know, Shaq obviously a uh, huge fan of bodybuilding and, you know, very involved uh, in many aspects of yeah. bodybuilding. So very cool to see. And it's a very, very cool story. But uh, we're going to finish out on this one. And I think this is some. this is a question that a lot of people can relate to, especially, you know, as those getting up in age. The questions from Chris Sanders. Is there a supplement I can take 
to help reduce inflammation in tendons. I have fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis. I take a small course of SUS and DECA so I can still train, but the inflammation on my elbow, medial and lateral tendons is really causing me an issue. Any help would be appreciated. Yeah, there's two things. Number one, and I'm not trying to push my own supplements, but they work. Uh, Arthrolyze from Species Nutrition. Take five pills twice a day with food. Um, that increases synovial fluid production in the joints, and that's going to also that's going to make the joints feel a lot better. It's also obviously going to help repair, you know, connective tissue, cartilage, you know, ligaments, tendons in there. But I think it's the, the lubrication that's going to really help you from that supplement. And there's another supplement on, on that they sell on Amazon called Boswellia Complex. It's by from Standard Process. Boswellia, I wouldn't use it every day, but if you're having some bad days where you have a lot of inflammation, Boswellia is a much more natural way to reduce in, or inflammation and inflammatory processes in the body. But not all Boswellia is created equal. This standard process brand, and I have no stake in it whatsoever, so I'm just telling you how I know it works, um, it works really, really well. So you can, you can pick that up from it. Probably the cheapest place to get it would be Amazon.com, I would think. I, I haven't seen it any cheaper any other places. A lot of professionals like chiropractors sell it too. It's like one of those things that the doctor sold in doctor's offices. But I think Amazon has it a lot cheaper. I also wanted to just throw in before we uh, go today that if anyone wants to pick up any uh, RX Muscle clothing like this beautiful Iron Rage t-shirt or the Heavy Muscle radio t-shirt or our RX Muscle emblem, we have a great Teespring store. You can check it out. If you look below this video, you'll see the Teespring store. You can click on it right there and you can pick up any cool male, female sweatshirts, t-shirts, tank tops. Uh, if you want to brandish the RX Muscle uh, logo, it's there. Before we go, so uh, Jonas Giatris uh, just posted this. It's the the point standings. I, I had a question for you, Dave. I'm not right. sure. So I know we had this uh, little debate between you and I about, you know, if, if somebody is Olympia qualified competing at a show yeah. uh, and they win that show, should second place get the automatic qualification? Well, this question is uh, if you know the, the factual definition or qualification criteria. So, Right now, the top three in standings are Justin Rodriguez, 26 points, Andrea Muzi, 26 points, uh, Steve Kuklo, 21 points. Now, from what I understand, Justin Rodriguez, and again, this was a few weeks ago, said that he would not be competing at this upcoming Olympia. Mm. So assuming that holds to be true, right. would only Andrea Muzi and Steve Kuklo uh, proceed to the Olympia, or would they bump it down to, say, Max Charles, who's sitting at 16 points? Good question, and I believe that they would only grab the top two. Yeah, I, I don't think they're gonna like go to the third position. Now, there's a still still a lot of shows left, so yeah, right. Theoretically, I mean, those points might not hold up. There might be guys that are gonna you know push past that. So, but yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I don't think that they will go to another spot just because Rodriguez has, has grabbed one of those spots. And he did so many shows. I would, I would find it hard to believe that there's going to be anyone that's going to push past 26 points before the end of the season. But you never know. You know, you never know. Well, big props to uh, Jonas in his first year as a professional, yeah. uh, currently 10th in the Olympia point standings. That is going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Again, if you haven't already done so, subscribe below, hit the notification bell. And as Dave mentioned, go visit our Teespring store, brand new RX Muscle Apparel. And we're going to be adding to that line as well. Maybe some of the funnier quotes, funnier lines, funnier sayings that come out of their shows. They print those on shirts. If you have any requests, you can forward them. Maybe you'll see that on a t-shirt as well. For Tyler Shore, Dave Palumbo, I'm Siddiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.